Boilermakers knocked off Southern University 67 to 50 on Sunday afternoon to even their record at 1 and 1. Purdue will take on Texas A&M at Mackey on Thursday night. That'll be a 7 o'clock tip with our pregame coverage starting at 6.45. And then Purdue hits the road next week. Two games in the Bahamas against Florida and Georgia over the Thanksgiving break. Good evening, everybody. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. We'll talk basketball with the head coach until the top of the hour. Uh, we will also be talking with uh, Mary Ashley Stevenson, one of the members of this talented freshman class. She will join us a little bit later on in the show. You can follow along tonight on Facebook on our Purdue Athletic site. Let us know where you are watching and if you have any questions for the coach. We're also on X and Instagram as well. We'll have the head coach with us next. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by the Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Season is underway at home for the Boilermakers as Abby Ellis drives baseline, shot up with the right hand through the contact and one. Bench through the game, no doubt. Abby Ellis drives through, kicks it out to Layden. Three-pointer up and good. Dynamic duo, Abby Ellis over here. Feed to the baseline, layup, up and good. Madison late, more like Madison layup. Now it's Janae Terry pushing in transition, three on four. Euro step up the middle, got blocked. Shot out to Terry, and it's an unbelievable assist. Janae Terry to Madison Layton. Fabillo had a little bit of a cold stretch here as Terry with the nice crossover. High feed to Harper and gets the mismatch to go. The false count gets the Jaguars feet into Stevenson off the glass and good. Mary Ashley Stevenson finishes with the left hand. You know, we knew that this was going to be a scrappy game going into it. Legions misses that one. Ball to Layden. Three pointer up and good. Couple of threes here in the third quarter. And you know, that's a like response that we'll definitely see from Southern when Purdue ha comes up with those big plays. The double screen on the inbounds play, clock winding down. This one tipped by Purdue and taken away. Madison Layden picks up the steal as now it's hard. Ellis moving it over to Jones and Rashonda Jones. Layden strong with the ball over to Jones on the far side wing. Swing to Ellis, long skip pass, three-pointer up and good. Very sound in the fundament in the fundamentals. Mary Ashley Stevenson feed into the post. Harper up and good. Nice finish with the right hand. Of Sanaya Reed, who has been a lights out player so far this year for her team. Terry passes it to Ellis. Mid-range jumper up and good. So now for Purdue, it's the ball going forward to Layton. McKenna Layton has it knocked loose. Feed to the post. Harper up and good. Wonderful assist. Season is underway at home for... Presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Joined by the head coach and a better outcome to talk about than last week, UCLA, to start the season. A tough one on the road. Uh, and by the way, Indiana teams going out to the West Coast have not fared very well here. Uh, Indiana blasted by 32 points at Stanford. So that's a, that's a tough trip out West. Uh, Southern, a little bit different team. Smaller team, quick... But uh, give me your thoughts on how, as you looked at the film, how you thought everybody did. Yeah, first of all, it's much better to talk to you after wins. Yes, um, it is. <laughs> uh, secondly, so let's do that this yeah, year. Oh, that would be great, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that we don't deviate from that game plan. Um, yeah, just uh, obviously we got a lot of lot of youth out there at times. But um, for the most part, I thought obviously we, we, we were better um, in scout. We didn't give up as many scouts, uh, missed opportunities. And the best thing about the game and even watching on film and seeing highlights um, here is our connectivity on the court. Our, our, our huddles at this at dead balls were, were seemed more intentional. There was actually some touching and, you know, uh, uh, it looked like we were actually um, being there for each other. Even when things got tough there in the fourth quarter and they cut it to what, 10 or eight, whatever it was, we were still a connected unit out there. I'm always anxious to see how teams react when they don't make shots. Uh, early on, you came out, you hit an early uh, burst and got off to a 12-4 lead, and you're thinking, well, maybe this is going to be an easy day. And then all of a sudden, the shots start, started not falling. They were able to grind back, and, and it's e I, lo I love to see a team when they have to grind to get out of a hole, it just in terms of it's not going to be easy to score today. Yeah, and... Uh, I know coaches don't like it, but... No, it's, it's, it's brutal over there for us, <laughs> especially when you're getting open looks, but... Um, you know, they had 19 points a half, and, mm -hmm. and obviously we only had 25, but 
we were pretty locked in, um, and we made them do some, you know, some some tough things, um, even in the in the first half, and that's why we held them to 19 points. You know, we challenge our you know our bench to come in and not really let allow a drop off. Um, forget the offensive end, but just a couple things there in the second quarter where we did we, we where we did screw up some some scout stuff, but uh, then they came back and responded well in the second half. Madison Layden came out hot, got some early scoring for you when everybody else was having a hard time finding the bucket. She finishes with 21 points, and we've talked before. Her, her points are going to come and go, but it's the other things that she does. You said you'd like her to actually be a little bit more selfish with the basketball at times. Yeah, um, you know, you, you kind of beg her to take some shots. Five, six shots isn't enough for Madison Layden, um, especially on a game like that when you're, when you're feeling it. Um, I know when, when I played, if I made my first four or five shots, that next one I was finding a way to touch the ball. And, and you kind of wish Madison had a little bit of, of that in her. But she's a, you know, she's a coach's kid. She, she plays the game the right way. Um, and, and then on the other side of the floor, you know, she's always guarding the other team's best player, doesn't turn the ball over at a high rate, um, always in the right spots defensively. Um, just kind of challenge her to be a little bit more selfish, especially when she's got it going. I got the sense watching you walk off the floor at halftime, it was not going to be a pleasant locker room. I'm, I'm guessing by the looks on the faces of some of the players coming out, it was not a pleasant locker room. What was conveyed during that time, and how did they respond to it? Um, I honestly don't even remember what, what I said. Um, I think we had made eight shots at the time and had seven assists on eight shots. We just um, we weren't getting anything. I mean, obviously, we weren't making any shots. Um, when we started to force a few things. Um, I thought Abby and Rashundo playing a little bit too hurry, you know, there in that first half, um, calmed down a little bit in the second half. Um, I, I, I think we're still kind of learning our, our new group. Um, I know how the five will respond if I go there and um, if, if I'm pretty hot and fired up, I know how they'll respond. I'm still learning these, these young kids and, and how they'll respond if something like that happens. Well, one of your players who did respond in the second half is actually our, one, our guest tonight, Mary Ashley Stevenson, scored all 13 of her points in the second half. And again, we saw a glimpse of the versatility that she provides you. Yeah, just the toughness. Um, you know, I talked to her before the game, um, and, you know, it's a consensus in, you know, upstairs in our office is that we're just we're tougher, we're better when she's on the floor. Um, got got two fouls there in the first half, um, but kind of settled in. And you know, a couple times we, I mean, we, late in the game, especially we were running actions when we were struggling to score. We were we were running actions for her to score because she's just got a natural feel um, for the game. And uh, you know, as long as she doesn't bring it down to the little guards and catches it at her chin and scores it, and puts it through the chest, um, you feel really good about when the ball goes into number twenty. Uh, she started in place of Jayla Smith. We didn't see Jayla Sunday. You said afterward an, an ankle issue. Is that a long term thing or is that a short term thing for her? No, uh, you know, she was able to practice today. Um, I think, you know, we're still trying to figure out, uh, you know, how much she can give us. Obviously, don't want to rush back into it, but uh, it's good to have number three's athleticism and, and, and speed out there for us. All right, we'll talk more with the head coach. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. At running back. Guard. Pump fakes the left. Now looking straight down the middle of the defense and throws a touchdown. First and ten. Call. Has time. Call. Looking toward the end zone. And this is caught for the touchdown. What a grab it was. TJ Sheffield with a terrific route. Hanging in the pocket and Sheffield running through the contact. He got grabbed. He got held. They're banged up. These guys are responding. Couple of running backs in the game, and this is Tracy who bursts into the second out across the 40. He will take it. So block back. I'm going to kick out. You go north and south. Really nice job by the Boilermakers. Picked up of 17. Now right after it, Cole down the field, and that is caught. Now inside the 10. Why not give him the football? <laughs> Tracy in for the touchdown. Wow. Taking some time with plays with their feet throughout this game. Maccabee, Maccabee gets the ball. Maccabee with the lane. Now Maccabee uh -oh. bursting down the sideline. It's a sprint to the end zone. Can Maccabee get there? He is dragged down. Guard, keep it himself. Touchdown, Purdue. Handoff. Maccabee. They call him Crazy Legs, but Crazy Legs can run. Maccabee out across midfield. Texas, and here he is. Now Card, nice move. Got him. Card looking downfield. Card, a touchdown. That's why you go get him. Deion Burks was behind the defense. And a touchdown rushing. Card, scanning. Card, 
Wow. Somehow gets away. Now Cart is still on his feet, has a completion, has a first down. Incredible play. It's Garrett Miller who was banged up. Now the Brett here again. again. He did his face. Kaliak man is You're listening to the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. As a coach, you, you see things happen in real time and you have an idea. I think this was good. I think this was bad. Uh, as an example on Sunday, when you went back and watched the film, was it confirmed or did you see things on film that you th either liked w better or liked less well than than you uh, in real time yeah i i think i liked some things less well um <laughs> than than in than in the game um you know but but the scout i thought was was more solid than i thought um during the game uh because we were you know we we're going over on ball screens who were we supposed to go over on we were going under when when we were supposed to i think they they hit a couple tough shots late shot clock um, that kind of got in. Obviously, we, we don't want to foul and give up and ones. Uh, but there were some things that, you know, we, we were able to see him today. Uh, we got to do a better job of boxing out. We can't just run straight to the rim. We've got to be able to box out and put bodies on somebody. Um, obviously, the next three games are uh, the, the size of the next three teams are, are, are much different than what we faced on Sunday. You turned the ball over 21 times on Sunday, part of that, their pressure. Uh, when you looked at those, was there a common theme in the, in, in the batches of turnovers that you had? I think a little bit of, of everything, just of being in a hurry. Um, I think Abby and Rashonda getting into the bank, we talked about that, um, and, and just being good decision makers. I thought our post passing was just horrendous. Um, you know, it, it, a little bit of bad timing, um, both the guards and, and, you know, not being able to pass it to the post when they're open. And then just some hurried decisions, um, you know, against their press. Yeah, I, we had more turnovers against Southern than we did UCLA. Uh, so just maybe a, a little bit more attention to detail, a little bit more fundamentally, just being a little bit fundamentally solid um, and, and just shore those things up. We, we're not a team that can that can give up free opportunities. You had some interested spectators in the stands that uh, were a pretty special basketball team here a quarter of a century ago. It was a fantastic <laughs> weekend where you got to honor the 1999 national champions. And, and before we talk about them, what did ha them being here mean to this group of, of uh, players for you? Yeah, I think um, I think the best time for us was shoot around on Sunday. Uh, we brought the team out into the middle of our circle, and I think there's a really cool picture out there um, with their joining us. And uh, lo and behold, Mary Ashley asked a really, really good question, and all of them went around the room and answered it. Um, and I think they're, you know, you know just – being around them and seeing the love and the passion and the joy they still had for each other 25 years later. I don't know, I think your toast um, Friday night before the men's game was, it just, it's not because they were 34 and one, it's not because they were national champions, it's because they were a family and a unit um, and there was a certain just kind of aura about them and you still felt it this past weekend, 25 years later. Just really, really cool. You know, Katie gave me the opportunity to do that, and I choked up because I love that group of people. And it's, you know, it's the old, you had to be there to go through the season where, okay, your coach announces before the season she's leaving. And, and they're, they're thinking about making a change, and are they going to have the fourth different coach in four years? Mm -hmm. And to their credit, Stephanie and Yukari went to Morgan Burke at the time and said, we're, we're not doing this. Um, we need... We need Carolyn to stay because we have a chance to do something special. Yeah. And they did. And you go through the ups and downs of a season. You win a national championship. And then four months later, you're in a bus heading to Alabama to say goodbye to one of your teammates. And yeah. it's the, the, the highs and the lows. And you looked around that room and it just, for, it just flashed back. It's just <laughs> such a special group of people, regardless of what they did on the court. Yeah, you can, you can just tell. Um, and then obviously Tiffany's presence is still around. Um, I think we're opening an endowed scholarship in her name, um, you know, to, for them to, to experience that, right? Like the, the absolute, you know, top of sports and being a national championship champion. And then four months later, lose your, your teammate. Um, you know, it just kind of put everything in perspective and you can kind of hear them tell stories. There, there really wasn't a dry eye in the room on any night that we were able to hang out with them. Um, through the, through the good times and the bad times, just their connectivity was just so incredible. And sadly, we lost Tiffany's mom last month. She passed away. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a it, – it was, it was sad, but it was also joyous because when you think of Tiffany Young, you think of that ear-to-ear -ear smile 
And, and I remember her walking down the aisle as we were heading to San Jose for the Final Four. And the players are up front. We're in the back. And she's just walking with her video camera, mm -hmm. taking every second of it in. She wanted to be around as many people as she could. Um, she was the light of the room in any room that she was in. Yeah. Um, we actually have a really cool collage. It's actually in Alex's office with a bunch of pictures from Tif with Tiffany and, and teammates and then a really cool poem that, that Coop wrote. Um, and it's, it was in our locker room. We've got to get it back into our new locker room. Um, but just really, really, really special. You know, the other group of people that I was really excited that, that they came were the assistant coaches on that team. We had Seth Cushkin back, Pam Stackhouse, Kerry Kermeen. Think about the situation they were in. They go into the season knowing that basically they're under unemployed or could be unemployed at the end of the year and they were all in all season long and and that's a that's a pretty special group of people too yeah I didn't know Seth very well but I've gotten to know him over the years um, obviously stack and Kerry hung around uh, with coach Curry yep. um, after Carolyn left and and both recruited me really hard but I never got to play for him right they they yeah. left yep. uh, the going into my freshman year uh, but have stayed connected but this weekend you know obviously Carrie lives in town but this weekend was able to connect a little bit more with Carrie. And, and a lot more with Stack and uh, just a bond you'll never lose. Well, it was a special time. I, I appreciate being included in it. And, uh, you know, I hope we're all around maybe for a 50th or a th I don't know. For whatever anniversary you have, I'll be there for it. Well, How about that? Tim, I hope we're, we're hanging another banner before we have to celebrate the 50th. <laughs> there you go. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us in two minutes. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Bonus volleyball here on Big Ten Plus as Hornug sends that one away. And she finds the floor. From the outside, she's had two aces today. Swing from Lotus Myers. Spartans able to keep it alive. Chicoin sends it away. Chloe Chicoin, her fourth ace of the afternoon. Set up again for Hudson. And Eva Hudson. That's a tough serve by Kulig. Set up for Hold'em, blocked by Myers. And Chicoin finds some open space in the backcourt. To serve it away. Magic number for the Boilermakers is two. Set up for Moore. Moore blocked, gets her own block. Ball over. Chicoin again. Chloe Chicoin coming up huge for the Boilermakers in set four. A couple of changes. Trey Green is on an instant story. Turns it over immediately, and Purdue come in the other direction. On the lob and the stop. And that was nasty. Creates a mismatch and an opportunity for Purdue to run. And Ivy is huge for that Sweet 16 team. And he likened Quincy Oliveri as a very similar product to Soleil Bowman. That's a pitch into the corner from Smith. And it's good. Second one for Colvin. Caleb first. Four three. Big hurry. Down the lane, Smith. Kick out, Morton. Yes. The trail got a lot of the time. Oh. oh boy, Oliveri had it pancaked, and this will be Purdue basketball for Zach Eady. But Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. We talked in the last segment about the Purdue family and the team that was here 25 years ago to win a championship. Uh, you signed three players last week that are joining the Purdue family and will be part of it going forward. Let's talk first. Uh, in the state of Indiana, Jordan Poole comes to you from Fort Wayne. What kind of a basketball player are you getting there? Yeah, um, first and foremost, obviously, you want to keep the best players in the state of Indiana. I think we did that with Jordy, um, an electric uh, basketball player, an elite elite passer in the open floor in a two-man game. Uh, can shoot the ball off the bounce. Um, really crafty getting inside, obviously, because of her size, but just a tough competitor and, and a winner. Um, I think the, this fan base is going to really love Jordy. Uh, my broadcast partner, Jane Schott, got a chance to, I, I say the chance, the opportunity to coach against her last <laughs> week. And 
Uh, West Lafayette led that one for quite a ways until Jordan decided they were not going to lose, and she kind of took over in the fourth quarter. Yeah, typical Jordan. You try to tell her, hey, go get your points first, uh, get the game out of reach, and then you can be a passer. You got two post players. Let's start with Lana McCarthy, who I believe is the first player from uh, New Hampshire in the program's history. Not yeah. exactly a recruiting hotbed for the Boilermaker program. No, it starts with New York City. You get someone from the, the coast there, and then you, you, you just kind of keep spanning it out. Um, you know, Lana's uh, all of 6'4", um, great, great fo footwork, um, good lateral speed, um, just just a really good team player. She's, she, You talk to her, and she's like, Coach, I just want to set screens and rebound. Like, that's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. And Okay, but she can score, right? She she can stretch the she can stretch it. Um, she's got great power inside, and and she's just gonna keep getting better and better. Um, a workhorse. Uh, I'm excited to have her on our team. I had the opportunity to meet your other post player during her visit, Kendall Perrier from uh, St. Louis. Not quite as tall, but she is very solid inside. Yeah, um, Kansas City native, uh, so a Chief fan. Um, like, I'm glad. I know you're excited about that. Yeah, I'm real thrilled about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, her brother played at Mizzou, um, and he was an undersized big um, and dominated the paint for Mizzou back in the day, played for Zoe back there. Um, same thing, she's, she's, she's mean. Uh, black belt in karate, um, physical, going to do some dirty work, set some nasty screens. Um, solid range to about 15, uh, but good strength and, and, and size inside for us. So she's the first one off the uh, bus when we get off and at the arena, right? And get out in front and intimidate a few people when she's coming Absolutely. in. Absolutely. She, uh, she will do that. She's got some nasty stares on the court when she gets mean. Um, as you're looking at constructing a roster, you have 15 scholarships with which to work, and, and you're always, the, the high school players are always going to be the base in 2023, the era of the portal, how do you, you use that? How do you need to use that to plug holes? Um, I think just you said it exactly, just to plug holes. Um, I think all along, uh, you you know, I think even talking to the 99 team, you, you know, they went through so much to get to that where they were because they were through, so they went through it together. And that's really what we want to build. We want to start with, you know, with our young kids. And, and by the time they're junior, seniors, you know, they've been in the trenches with each other. They've gone to war with each other. Um, they're ready to, to make sure, you know, they're going to have each other's back. Obviously, you gotta you got to plug some holes. Um, I think that that's, that's inevitable because you're going to have some, you know, some natural attrition, if you may. But um, for the most part, uh, not for the most part, we want to build it from the ground up and, and start with our young kids and, and just keep continue to build the future around, around those guys. There, there are players committed from the class of 2025 verbally. They're not signed, so we can't talk about them. But as you're looking again, uh, what are you still looking for at this point as you, as you try to build this program? What is, what is your biggest need, you think, going forward? Uh, just some solid basketball players, solid teammates. Um, you know, uh, I think we've we've got some spots where we where we started to fill some needs. Um, you know, but we're we're just looking for the best basketball players right now. Um, but on top of that, they've got to fit into what we're building culture-wise. Um, you know, it it just it matters so much, and you know, we want to make sure we're doing it the Purdue way. All right, we're going to talk to one of your prize recruits from this season. It'll be Mary Ashley Stevenson on the show next. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. I remember playing here, and there was something in this concourse that you walked by every single day, and it, it made you push and strive and, and make sacrifices when you didn't want to to make sure we had another one. So uh, we wanted to make sure we got it back up here where it belongs. Um, so thank you for your greatness, um, and thank you for being here.
season is underway at home for the Boilermakers as Abby Ellis drives baseline, shot up with the right hand through the contact and one. Bench through the game, no doubt. Abby Ellis drives through, kicks it out to Layden. Three pointer up and good. Dynamic duo, Abby Ellis over here. Feed to the baseline, layup up and good. Madison Layden, more like Madison layup. Now it's Janae Terry pushing in transition, three on four. Euro step up the middle. Got blocked, shot out to Terry, and it's an unbelievable assist. Of Sanaya Reed, who has been a lights out player so far this year for her team. Terry passes it to Ellis, mid range jumper up and good. So now for Purdue, it's the ball going forward to Layton. McKenna Layton has it knocked loose, feed to the post. Lafayette Limo, family owned, women owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Pleased to be joined by Mary Ashley Stevenson. She is a freshman from New York City. Played at the Dalton School. Where in the city actually is the Dalton School located? The Dalton School is actually on the Upper East Side of New York City. Okay. Uh, and you had been in New York City for how long? How, did you move around as a, as a youngster, or were you pretty much an, a New York City person all along? Yes, I moved around quite a bit. Um, so I was born in South Carolina, but mm. then my family made our way to San Francisco, and after that, a suburb of New York City, uh, Bronxville, and then finally New York City. Um, but COVID kind of threw us through a loop. We ended up taking a stop in Connecticut and then South Carolina my sophomore year of high school and then coming back to New York for junior and senior year. So you are well-traveled. I am So well -traveled. let's talk New York City, West Lafayette, Indiana. Compare yes. and contrast. A little difference oh. between those two places. <laughs> yes, definitely a little different. Um, but, you know, I knew that coming in and one of the greatest things about moving around as much as I did was that ability to say, you know what, it's it's different, it's new, but I know I can handle it. And it was something I was really looking forward to because no matter how much I love the city, I did want something a little different. Um, and West Lafayette gives me exactly that. <laughs> it's a little different at 3 a.m., I can tell yes. you that. Um, cross country and lacrosse in high school, along yes. with basketball. Uh, cross country, I understand you've got the, the long legs that, that you should be able to cover a lot of ground. Lacrosse, though, tell me about that. Uh, and and uh, did you like it? I loved lacrosse. Um, it really was just something that it was a spring sport that I knew I could, you know, try out and just see. Um, and it actually helped me a lot with basketball. I was a defender in lacrosse, and lacrosse is all about moving your feet. Um, so it's it's really prepared me, I think, for coming here and Coach KG really getting getting on me on defense. So um, I think it it was great, and it was a great way to kind of take my mind off basketball and do a little cross training. Uh, your mom, who is here, by the way, tonight, can we have a round of applause for Ashley, her mom, who's made the trip here? She was a college basketball player at Wofford, so as you were going through this recruiting process, she was at least familiar with a little bit about what coaches were going to be looking for, what you needed to look for. How big of a help was that to have a mom who had been through that before? She was a huge help. Um, she is one of my biggest role models. Um, and truly just having someone who was able to went through it and was able to kind of guide me. I think the recruiting process is something that is really difficult um, and having a mom and my dad as well being able to say like here we need to focus on our values. You know don't get all caught up in the well now we have it but the fanciest locker room and right. you know the the private flights and all of that kind of stuff you need to choose what is most important to you in the school that you're going to be from you know a personal standpoint from a basketball standpoint academic standpoint and go from there you mentioned your dad he uh, has a communications and a television background helped found the uh, golf channel helped write the business plan for the WNBA works now for Major League Soccer. How much did his influence help you again as you were going through this process? A lot. Um, I mean, as I said, both of them were, you know, outspoken in making sure I made the right choice. Um, and they are beyond happy that I chose Purdue. But my dad, with his background, had a lot of connections that gave me the best opportunity to make the right choice because he knew, you know, going into a program 
coaches w while, during the recruiting process are going to promise you a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but what is it that you need to lock in on and really understand before you commit somewhere? I'm going to guess with your dad's connections, you got to meet a lot of famous people growing up. What was that like? Well, who was the most famous person that you met oh. or your favorite famous person that you met? That is a tough one. Um, Lots to choose from. <laughs> yeah, a few to choose from. Um, Were you overwhelmed by the celebrity before you give me a name or two? No, I would say no, just because uh, my dad and mom always were kind of, I looked to them to see how they would react, right. and they were always pretty stone-faced about it. Um, I would say probably um, Drew Barrymore. Um, she was probably the, the biggest star that I have met, um, and, you know, I love her and everything that she's done, so I was very excited about that one. Well, and she, she can say, now, I, well, I know Mary Ashley Stevenson, <laughs> so that's going to be a big deal as, as we're going forward, too. True. Um, so what was it about Purdue? What was it about Coach Gerald's? What, what was it about this program that brought you here? Yeah, um, so... To start off for Purdue, I am someone who wants to, after basketball, really be able to excel with athletics. Uh, sorry, with academics. So I wanted to come to a school where I knew I could have that foundation and graduate with a degree that I'm really proud of, and I can do that at Purdue. Um, and, you know, one of the things I thought about before coming up here, though, was during the recruiting process, you have every school tell you that they're a great school and that there's a bunch of schools with a long history of wins and all of that. And mm -hmm. Purdue does have all of that. Right. Um, but there is only one Katie Gerald. <laughs> and for me, that's really what it came down to. Um, I had a lot of great schools on my list, and I was thankful to be, be recruited by all of them. But Coach Katie just made the difference, and in the end, I couldn't say no. Um, she recruited me. She recruited my family. And I knew coming here that she would have more confidence in me, even when I didn't have confidence in myself. And that's all I needed was knowing that I was wanted and I would come in and she would make me make an impact. All right. Hold tight. We need to take a break, but we'll have more with Mary Ashley Stevenson after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Season is underway at home for the Boilermakers as Abby Ellis drives baseline, shot up with the right hand through the contact and one. Bench through the game, no doubt. Abby Ellis drives through, kicks it out to Layden. Three pointer up and good. Dynamic duo, Abby Ellis over here. Feed to the baseline, layup up and good. Madison Layden, more like Madison layup. Now it's Janae Terry pushing in transition, three on four. Euro step up the middle. Got blocked, shot out to Terry, and it's an unbelievable assist. Janae Terry to Madison Layden. Fabillo had a little bit of a cold stretch here as Terry with the nice crossover. High feed to Harper and gets the mismatch to go. The false count gets the Jaguars feed into Stevenson off the glass and good. Mary Ashley Stevenson finishes with the left hand. You know, we knew that this was going to be a scrappy game going into it. Legions misses that one. Ball to Layden. Three-pointer up and good. Couple of threes here in the third quarter. And you know, that's a response that we'll definitely see from Southern when Purdue ha comes up with those big plays. The double screen on the inbounds. Play clock winding down. This one tipped by Purdue and taken away. Madison Layden picks up the steal as now it's hard. Ellis moving it over to Jones and Rashunda Jones. Layton strong with the ball over to Jones on the far side wing. Swing to Ellis, long skip pass, three-pointer up and good. Very sound in the, fundament, in the fundamentals. Mary Ashley Stevenson feeding to the post. Harper up and good. Nice finish with the right hand. Of Sanaya Reed, who has been a lights-out player so far this year for her team. Terry passes it to Ellis, mid-range jumper up and good. So now for Purdue, it's the ball going forward to Layton. McKenna Layton has it knocked loose. Feed to the post. Harper up and good. Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. 
Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. A former teammate of Katie Gerald's is still playing professional basketball. Aya Traore turned 40 years old in July. She is still playing in Spain and averaging 11 and a half points and seven rebounds a game for her team, which is two and two. Ariana Harris is also playing right now in Spain. She's averaging six and a half points and nine and a half rebounds, but her team is 0 and four so far. And finally, Laisha Petrie, who we saw last year, a graduate transfer from uh, Bradley and Rutgers. Uh, she is playing in Finland, averaging almost 20 points and five rebounds a game. Her team off to a one and four start. I have a feeling we'll be talking about Mary Ashley Stevenson a few oh, years from so. now. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the basketball part of this. We haven't really gotten on the court, but how have you fit into what Purdue is trying to do here, and how do you feel your strengths can really complement what we're doing here? Of course. Um, Coach Katie, when she recruited me here, talked about needing someone who, you know, A, we are in the process of kind of creating a new culture under her. Um, so that was the first thing is bringing positivity, bringing hard work. And we've had multiple conversations this year about what are, you know, my main what are the main things that I can bring to this team? And for me, that is toughness and hustle. And if I can make, if I can be the toughest player on the court and if I can hu hustle the most and make everyone around me do that same thing, then we're gonna be a very successful team. Um, and I think we, you know, I was able to show a little bit of that in our Southern game, but I think there's so much that I can grow with that, and that's what I want to bring to this team. When your best players on your team are your hardest workers, it's usually a great ingredient for success, and other players will feed off of you, so that is a very important part. What's been the toughest adjustment so far for you? I would say the toughest adjustment... Um, I think coming from situations in high school where, you know, you're you're always immediately looked to as a leader because w whether it's my personality or, you know, my skill in basketball, it was always very easy for me to kind of like insert myself into those roles. But on this team, you know, we have other leaders on the yeah. team. We have people who I am learning so much from. And I think the challenge for me is being able to how can I be a leader in my own way on this team and learn from the people who have so much to provide for me as well. Uh, your first collegiate game you go to Poly Pavilion and take on one of the best teams in the country. Nothing like jumping into the deep end of the ocean yes. here in your first game. What was that experience like for you? Well it was certainly nerve-wracking at first playing a team like UCLA um, in your first college game. It was like Okay, here we go, <laughs> especially when you uh, go down the paint and you run into 6-7. But I think it was great for our team to see this is where we want to go um, and understand that here are the things we need to do to get there. And I think for me specifically, it gave me a lot of confidence because even though the game did not go as we wanted it to, there were so many things looking back on film, looking, you know, talking to our coaches that we – it was in reach. Like there are things that we can do so much better right now. Um, so the idea that, you know, in my first college game, I was able to play a little. I, mm -hmm. I proved that I belong, and I'm just going to continue to prove that I can win those games. All right. After uh, basketball is done, and hopefully that's many, many, many years from now, you're a communications major. What, is, is this headset thing something you've got in your future? Maybe. I hope so. Um, whether it's like journalism or possibly going to a law school, but I definitely have a lot of big plans for my uh, after basketball future. Well, we're awfully glad that you decided to make that turn over here to West Lafayette. I know we'll try to get the nightlife hopping for you a little bit to match what you had in New York City, but uh, great start so far. Happy to have you here and good luck this freshman season. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. At running back. Guard. Puck takes the left, now looking straight oh, wow. down the middle of the defense and throws a touchdown. First and ten. Carr has time. Carr looking toward the end zone, and this is caught for the touchdown. What a grab it was. T.J. Sheffield with a terrific route. Hanging in the pocket, and Sheffield running through the contact. He got grabbed. He got held. They're banged up. These guys are responding. 
couple of running backs in the game, and this is Tracy who bursts into the second air out across the 40. He will take it, so. Block back, I'm gonna kick out. You go north and south. Very nice job by the Boilermakers. Picked up of 17, now right after it, Cole down the field. And that is caught now inside the 10. Why not give him the football? <laughs> Tracy in for the touchdown. Wow. Taking some time with plays with their feet throughout this game. Maccabee, Maccabee gets the ball. Maccabee with the lane. Now Maccabee uh -oh. bursting down the sideline. It's a sprint to the end zone. Can Maccabee get there? And he is dragged down. Card, keep it himself. Touchdown, Purdue. Hand off. Maccabee. They call him Crazy Legs, but Crazy Legs can run. Maccabee out across midfield. Texas, and here he is. Now Card. Nice move. Got him. Card looking downfield. Card. A touchdown. That's why you go get him. Deion Burks was behind the defense. And a touchdown rushing. Card. Scanning. Card. Wow. Somehow gets away. Now Card is still on his feet. Has a completion. Has a first down. Incredible play. It's Garrett Miller who was banged up. Now the Brett's here again. He did his face. Kaliak man is trying to retreat <laughs> in. The Katie Gerald Show on 5.3 Bob FM. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Boilermakers in Texas A&M Thursday night at 7 o'clock, 6.45 air. Courtney Delks, you knew her as Courtney <laughs> Moses, she will join me for that one. Uh, Jane Schott's high school game has been rescheduled from Friday to Thursday, so we'll have Courtney fill in on Thursday night. Uh, Ira checking in from Swamico, Wisconsin, as always, and Brianne over at Ball State to check in, says she'll be at Mackey. On the 26th, we hope we'll have a lot of fans at Mackey on the 26th. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, we need to get uh, the atmosphere back. We talked about the 25th anniversary team. We need to get that atmosphere back, and I think uh, we're off to a pretty good start that way. Yeah, I thought we had a really good crowd on Sunday, and uh, hopefully that can, that can just continue. You played Texas A&M down in College Station last year. It was just before Christmas, and to say it was a defensive struggle is an understatement. Um, it was – if you love – games that feel like having your tooth pilled with no Novocaine, you would have loved that one. Uh, but the Boilermakers won it, and uh, you said they're a little bit different team than they were a season ago. Yeah, still, a, still, um, you know, obviously same coach, same system. Uh, you know, last year I think we were talking, I was like, man, first team to 60, and I don't think no, we got to 60, do we? I think so. Um, you know, we've, but we found a way to win the ball game. Um, you know, they've got a, a, a couple transfers uh, from the portal. Um, last year we played them, they didn't have um, – uh, one of their one of their better players, Janiah so Barker. yeah, Jan yep. yeah, Janiah Barker. So obviously um, a different ball club than what we faced, um, but still very similar in the way that they play. Um, you know, and, and, and same with us, right? We're a completely different ball club, but try to be very similar to to how we've been, just trying to get better. Uh, I'm sure you'll look at tape from that game last year, but when you have the change in personnel on both sides, how useful is it going forward? Um, still, still pretty useful. Obviously, you get tendencies from from the coaches, um, or you know what they like to do out of timeouts or dead ball situations, offensively, defensively, that kind of stuff. Um, they still they run some of the same actions, some similar actions, uh, just you know different players um, in those spots. But uh, for us, you know, same thing. We just got to be locked in to, to scout and personnel and um, battle our butts off. As this program grows and gets back to that championship form, it's really, really important to hold your home court advantage. And so games like this really take on added significance early in the season. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's no secret, right? It's uh, You talk to our group, they want to make sure we protect Mackey. Um, and, you know, for, for us to protect Mackey, we got to get a win on Thursday. All right, we'll have the final <laughs> segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Learfield. I remember playing here and there was something in this concourse that you walked by every single day and it, it made you push and strive and, and make sacrifices when you didn't want to to make sure we had another one. So uh, we wanted to make sure we got it back up here where it belongs. Um, so thank you for your greatness um, and thank you for being here.
is underway at home for the Boilermakers as Abby Ellis drives baseline, shot up with the right hand through the contact and one. Bench through the game, no doubt. Abby Ellis drives through, kicks it out to Layden. Three pointer up and good. Dynamic duo, Abby Ellis over here. Feed to the baseline, layup up and good. Madison Layden, more like Madison layup. Now it's Janae Terry pushing in transition, three on four. Euro step up the middle. Got blocked, shot out to Terry, and it's an unbelievable assist. Of Sanaya Reed, who has been a lights out player so far this year for her team. Terry passes it to Ellis, mid range jumper up and good. So now for Purdue, it's the ball going forward to Layton. McKenna Layton has it knocked loose, feed to the post. This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at PurdueFed.com. Katie, we won't have a show next week because at uh, this time next week we will be at Nassau, the Bahamas, 80 degrees. Shucks. Hopefully enjoying a win from the night before and getting ready for another game. So let's talk about the schedule. You play on Thursday night against Texas A&M. What's the schedule then from there to your trip to the Bahamas? Uh, then we have to take Friday off just with, <clears throat> excuse me, with NCAA. Uh, you know, the next week we have three, um, three games and right. a travel day on Thanksgiving. So... Got to give them two, two, two days off this week. So Friday's a day off. We take off Saturday morning, 7 a.m. Uh, to bus to Chicago to, to fly there. I think we land around 4. Um, and then we'll have a, a, an evening practice, uh, practice the next day. And then we'll play Monday. Two SEC teams down there, Florida <laughs> and Georgia. I'm sure you've been taking a little bit of a look at them. Uh, what can you expect from those, I would assume, athletic big basketball teams? Yeah, same thing. Um, you know, uh, Florida is very similar to, to how they were last year. Um, you know, we, we think we can take advantage of some opportunities, but we got to take a lot of things away from them. Obviously, um, they've got, you know, good post in there. Obviously, Shea Kyle's down there. So we're, we're a little familiar with her. They've got some good guards. Um, and then Georgia, a little different. So obviously, Florida expect a lot of man. Georgia expect a lot of zone. Um, uh, so we've got to be able to, to knock some shots down. When you have these holiday trips, basketball is a big part of it, but bonding is also a big part of it. I assume that there will be some activities away from the basketball court that everybody will be able to participate in. Yeah, um, we had Amy on the show last week, and she came to me yesterday, hey, can we go through the itinerary? No, I trust you. You just tell us what we're doing. Um, I want to work on Texas A&M. So I really have no idea what we're doing, uh, but I trust Amy's going to put us in some really cool opportunities for our, our young people, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a great time. Well, you've got an opportunity with these next three games, Texas A&M, Florida, and Georgia, to make a statement and really find out where your basketball team is right now. Yeah, big three test. Um, obviously, Thursday's a, a huge one a huge one for our ball club um, um, at Mackey. Uh, got to protect our home floor, like you said. So uh, get out Thursday night and uh, be loud for us, please. Well, we won't be back here until November 27th, so happy Thanksgiving to everybody who is uh, watching and listening. And uh, Good luck down there. Uh, make sure you save me a spot on the plane coming home. Oh, we will do that. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. Uh, and our engineer tonight, Wes Scott. Our producer is Roger Forsyth. Video by Corey Palm and our gang. Uh, the Boilermakers will take on Texas A&M Thursday night. 7 o'clock will be the tip. We'll be on the air at 645 for that. Courtney Delft joins me there. And then our next uh, Katie Gerald show coming up uh, two weeks from yesterday, November 27th at 7 o'clock. For the head coach, I'm Tim Newton. This has been... The Boilermakers' Katie Gerald show on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.